In all parts of the earth, divine teaching is triumphing. But in view of our critical times, can we confidently expect it to continue doing so? Most assuredly, yes. And why can we be so certain? Because of what we read in God's Word, the Bible. Long ago, the prophet Isaiah wrote, The green grass has dried up, the blossom has withered. But as for the Word of our God, it will last a time indefinite. That Word of our God is beneficial for teaching, and it exerts power. The triumph of divine teaching is clearly seen in the lives of millions of people who have been transformed by the power of God's Word. Jehovah's Witnesses have experienced this wholesome change, and for that reason they are zealously diffusing the light of truth worldwide. Their appreciation for this privilege is appropriately expressed at 2 Corinthians 2.14. Thanks be to God, who always leads us in a triumphal procession in company with the Christ and makes the knowledge of Him perceptible through us in every place. In 232 different lands scattered across the face of this globe, such life-giving knowledge is now available. Recently, the extent and the effect of this activity were strikingly demonstrated in a series of international conventions that highlighted the benefits of divine teaching. This slide presentation, entitled Divine Teaching Triumphs Worldwide, will help you to appreciate the powerful impact that the teachings of God's Word have had on Jehovah's Witnesses and the way that these teachings are transforming the lives of millions of people who study the Bible with them and associate at their meetings. The joyful attitude and the fine conduct of those who attended these international gatherings were powerful testimony to the triumph of divine teaching over the forces of darkness enveloping mankind. Convention delegates crisscrossed the globe as they traveled to Europe, to the Far East, to Latin America, and to Africa. During October and November 1993, two special international conventions were held in Hong Kong. This commercial center of six million inhabitants with its busy harbor attracts hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. But Jehovah's Witnesses had come there for more than just sightseeing. At the busy international airport terminal, Welcome signs greeted convention delegates arriving from more than 20 lands. Those attending the first Hong Kong convention assembled at the Queen Elizabeth Stadium, which was filled to capacity. They heard members of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses develop significant points in their talks, detailing the triumph of divine teaching over the teachings of demons. Brother Lloyd Berry gave a number of the major talks. He explained how Bible teachings are superior, providing reliable answers to enlighten the mind and heart concerning basic questions about our life here on earth and prospects for the future. Two other members of the governing body spoke at the second Hong Kong convention in mid-November. Brother Milton Henschel gave a keynote address, which an interpreter clearly conveyed in Chinese for the local audience. Groups from Japan and Korea heard the same talk interpreted into their own languages. Brother John Barr announced the release of a new brochure entitled, What is the Purpose of Life? How Can You Find It? Right after the session, this was made available in the Chinese language, much to the delight of those present. What joy local witnesses in this bustling city experience as they spread divine teaching and see it enlighten those seeking to know the truth about God and why we are here. This is a message that affects the lives of all sorts of people, and it will be interesting to see the extent to which it will yet penetrate into that densely populated region. During the week between the two Hong Kong conventions, Manila, in the Philippines, with its some eight million inhabitants, served as host for another international convention. Five stadiums in the Manila area were used for this event. 
the English-speaking delegates met in an indoor arena. At other stadiums, the program was presented in Tagalog. The huge crowds obviously appreciated all the fine spiritual provisions. Everyone participated in the singing of kingdom songs, a regular feature of each day's program. Young and old found this to be very upbuilding. Convention highlights included the release of the book, Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom, and a Bible containing the New World Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures in the Tagalog language. The delegates were most delighted. Quite a number of Filipino missionaries serve in other places, including Papua New Guinea, Taiwan, and various islands of Micronesia, where they zealously proclaim the good news of God's purpose to restore the earth to paradisaic beauty. The provision for these missionaries to return to their home country in order to attend this convention was very much appreciated. Prior to and following the convention, thousands of foreign delegates enjoyed touring the fine branch facilities of the Watchtower Society located in Quezon City. From the time of their arrival, the delegates were deeply impressed with the warm welcome, the neatly kept grounds, and the clean and well-maintained buildings where the 325 members of the Bethel family live and work. The first of two international conventions held in South America took place in late November in Santiago, Chile. This city gets plenty of sunshine and is beautifully situated in the center of the country at the foot of the towering Andes Mountains. Trains and buses brought thousands of Chilean witnesses from north and south. For many of them, it was their first visit to Santiago. Local brothers were on hand to welcome them and assist them in getting to their accommodations. The National Stadium proved to be a suitable place for the throngs of happy conventioners. The stadium was the main facility used, and its location was shown on a plan displayed at the convention grounds. On the well-trimmed grassy field, the theme, Divine Teaching, was spelled out in the Spanish language. Groups of foreign visitors had sections in the stadium reserved for them and signs identified the countries, near and far, that they were from, such as Spain, Ecuador, Bolivia, Mexico, and Japan. Inasmuch as there were language groups other than English and Spanish, certain talks were interpreted into French, German, and Japanese. Missionaries who helped to develop the South American field from the 1940s onward reminisced with members of the Brooklyn headquarters staff. Some of these missionaries graduated from the very first class of the Watchtower Bible School of Gilead. How they rejoice that the triumph of divine teaching can be seen by the increase in true worshipers in this part of the world field. That became strikingly evident in the attendance, which swelled to a peak of 80,000 on Sunday. Local witnesses were there from some 150 congregations in Santiago, together with Bible students and thousands of others who had been invited. It was apparent from this capacity crowd that there are many thousands in this land who are hungering for truth and righteousness. Here, too, arrangements were made for delegates to tour the branch facilities. Located in Puente Alto, a suburb of Santiago, this branch supervises the kingdom preaching work throughout the territory of Chile. Now, following the convention, there would be much work to do in cultivating the interest awakened by this international event, something never before witnessed by the people in Chile. During the middle of December 1993, focus was on the international gathering held in Bogota, Colombia, a city situated high in the Andes Mountains, nearly 9,000 feet above sea level. In preparation for the Divine Teaching Convention, members of the Watchtower Society's branch staff in Colombia worked hard to get everything ready. Before and after the convention, Jehovah's Witnesses from other lands visited this beautiful branch facility. 
They appreciated the important role played by those who work hard to provide Bible literature that features divine teaching and to supervise its distribution among honest-hearted people throughout the country. The delegation of 400 from Japan, many of whom are full-time pioneer ministers, reflected the happiness that God's people possess as a result of knowing the truth found in God's Word. On the opening day, what a sight it was to see the huge throng filling this stadium. It was as if they were responding to the psalmist's words, Come into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courtyards with praise. Speaking through an interpreter, Brother Kerry Barber gave the keynote address to set the tone for the timely program. Later, Brother Albert Schroeder, who had already served the convention in Barranquilla, thrilled the audience with the release of the book Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom in the Spanish language. Among the many youths in attendance were these young men who were candidates for baptism. Right within view of the audience, 1,744 persons symbolized their dedication to God by submitting to water immersion. The 40,000 attending the sessions at this large stadium provided convincing evidence that divine teaching has reached an increasing number of people with receptive hearts, and the prospects are bright indeed for many more to be taught the kingdom good news here in Colombia. Toward the latter part of December of that same year, the series of conventions moved into Africa. Nairobi, in the East African country of Kenya, is accustomed to receiving visitors regularly. It was the site of two conventions. Groups of delegates from Australia, Europe, North America, and Asia found the setting for the convention to be most enjoyable. There were no ethnic barriers such as those that cause hatred and strife in many places. These people were thrilled to meet one another and get acquainted with all the different groups present, including those from other East African lands. One happy group came from Tanzania. It required considerable sacrifice on their part, saving up their funds and pooling their resources in order to be present for this grand occasion. The same could be said for the faithful witnesses who traveled from Rwanda, some of whom you see here. Rwanda is a country that has since been ravaged by internal strife and tragic happenings also affecting many of Jehovah's Witnesses. Members of the governing body participated in the program at the two Nairobi conventions. Brother Daniel Sidlick gave the keynote address to the English audience at one of them. On the opposite side of the park, Brother Barry spoke to the Swahili group through an interpreter. And so did Brother Lyman Swingle when he gave the keynote address at the first convention. Everyone enjoyed the varied program parts, especially the dramas. The participants, including young ones, performed their assigned roles effectively, and they blended well with the colorful stage setting. Between sessions, all took advantage of the opportunity to enjoy moments of Christian fellowship with their African brothers and the delegates from other lands. Though these came from many different ethnic groups and spoke a variety of tongues, all were united by the pure language of truth. Another triumph of divine teaching. Following the talk on baptism, the candidates lined up in an orderly fashion and submitted to water immersion in symbol of their dedication to God. The baptism took place in a portable pool right on the convention grounds. This important step was being taken by individuals who had been taught to observe all the things that Christ had commanded. No wonder the baptism was keenly observed by young and old. The children especially were impressed with what they saw, recognizing that this was clearly a serious yet joyful occasion in the lives of those being immersed. More than 81 missionaries of Jehovah's Witnesses serve in Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. They related the joys of having observed the triumph of divine teaching in the lives of thousands of truth-seekers who have accepted the kingdom hope and Jehovah's means of salvation through His Son. 
What a pleasure it was to speak with these self-sacrificing missionaries. Another country on that continent that hosted international conventions was South Africa. Four cities were used in this land where the message of God's kingdom has reached people of many ethnic groups. One convention was held in the coastal city of Cape Town, with famous Table Mountain in the background. Cape Town is a center where 83 congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses flourish. Three language groups met in different locations at the Goodwood Showgrounds. This international convention of Jehovah's Witnesses, attended by 11,131, was the first ever held in Cape Town. On the east coast of South Africa is the port city of Durban, which served as a host city in the eastern part of the country for the English and Zulu language groups. The baptism there was a highlight, as 356 people who had responded to divine teaching symbolized their dedication to Jehovah. The peak attendance at Durban was reached on Sunday, with 24,143 listening to the program. In Pretoria, the administrative capital of South Africa, arrangements similar to those in other cities enabled 13,117 to assemble, and various buildings at the showgrounds were used to accommodate the different language groups. The largest of the four international conventions in South Africa was held in Johannesburg, with 26,921 attending. Here, sessions were conducted in Afrikaans, English, Greek, Portuguese, Sisuthu, and Zulu. Halls on the grounds were numbered, making it easy for conventioners to identify the location for each language group. Smiling faces spontaneously reflected the deep-seated joy that characterizes those who respond to divine teaching in this land of diverse peoples. It is obvious that these people, who display self-sacrificing love for one another, despite being of varying backgrounds, have the identifying mark of being Christ's disciples. They are truly united in purpose and in their worship of the one true and living God, Jehovah. The two members of the governing body who serve the conventions, brothers Theodore Jairus and John Barr, released the book, Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom, in different languages. The delegates were most attentive and well-disciplined. Careful note-taking by all age groups was a common sight. This was typical of members of all the language groups, manifesting a desire to listen and learn so as to apply divine teaching in their personal lives. How spiritually stimulating it was to be together with these African witnesses from various countries, worshiping Jehovah with spirit and truth. All agreed that this was a foretaste of the gladsome time when those who live in God's righteous new world will rejoice as they keep walking in accord with divine teaching. It was a blessing that because of developments in Eastern Europe in recent years, arrangements could be made for huge gatherings to take place in that part of the world. Our interest will now be centered on some of the highlights in connection with international conventions held in Moscow and Kiev. Time and again, Moscow has been the focus of world attention. The area in and around the Kremlin has often been marked by significant developments affecting the lives of millions. Today, it is a major tourist attraction. A sprawling subway system, or metro, serves the needs of the city's 10 million inhabitants. In Moscow, the number of congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses is rapidly increasing, so it was appropriate that arrangements were made for holding an international convention there. Responsible brothers from Finland and Russia worked together harmoniously in organizing convention departments and preparing for the big event. Delegates from many lands included a large group that lined up at a London airport ready for departure from Britain. 
Many full-time ministers were among the 800 excited delegates preparing for their long flight from Japan. A large group from Finland also came by air, while others from that land traveled by train. Yes, from all directions, delegates converged on Moscow. A friendly welcome awaited these international visitors arriving at Moscow's international airport. Delegates were given assistance with information and transportation, and they were bused to their hotels in various parts of the city. Upwards of 3,000 delegates from several countries stayed at the Cosmos Hotel. Another 3,000 were assigned to the Ismailova, a complex of several buildings. At the Rossiya Hotel, about 4,000 from Britain, France, Italy, Japan, Mexico, and the United States were accommodated. Hospitality desks at each of these hotels serve the needs of the delegates. With so many international visitors from more than 30 lands, arrangements were made for sightseeing tours to places of interest in and around the city before and after the convention. Wherever they happened to be, the convention delegates took advantage of opportunities to witness to people, including those they met at famous Red Square. People seemed eager to discuss and read about topics affecting their lives. Many interesting experiences were enjoyed right in this area. On the streets also, witnesses approached people and found that most were eager to listen and converse as well as accept tracts that give a scriptural presentation on vital subjects in their own language. On each convention day, tourist and shuttle buses transported foreign delegates between their hotels and the stadium. The police escorted many of these buses along main thoroughfares. How heartwarming it was that when the travelers arrived at the stadium, the delegations from Europe, the Orient, and North America all blended together in unity, a triumph of divine teaching. Throngs came through the main gates leading to Locomotive Stadium. Everything was ready for the opening day. The convention theme was spelled out in Cyrillic characters on the field. One could sense that something different was taking place in Moscow. As the air filled with the melody and words of the opening song, with the many different language groups participating, all in attendance were greatly moved. This caught the attention even of outsiders who were working nearby. It was an unforgettable experience to be present at the first large convention ever held in Moscow and to hear the opening words of welcome as expressed and interpreted into 15 languages. There was an enthusiastic response from the Russian delegates and all the foreign visitors. The keynote address was given with great feeling by Brother Sidlik, a member of the governing body. It was interpreted for the benefit of all the language groups present. Early Friday morning, Foreign delegates arrived with gifts of food items that they had brought to Russia, knowing there would be a need. These items were sorted and distributed to the schools where many of the Russian brothers were accommodated. At the close of the morning session, to the delight of everyone, Brother Schroeder of the governing body announced the release in Russian of the new brochure. What is the purpose of life? How can you find it? On Friday afternoon, there was a downpour of rain, but the brothers remained. During the talk, tell us when will these things be, given by the president of the Watchtower Society, Brother Henschel, literal lightning and thunder produced sound effects that synchronized with his description of Jehovah's execution of judgment. Later in the afternoon, the rain stopped and the sky began to clear. The conventioners were glad that they had remained. All were thrilled by the announcement concerning the release of My Book of Bible Stories in the Russian language. This beautiful book was distributed following the session. As delegates left the stadium that day, they recounted their blessings. 
There were so many good spiritual provisions of divine teaching that filled the hearts and satisfied the needs of those feeding at the table of Jehovah. Buses were lined up ready to take foreign delegates to their places of accommodation. Each day, reports were heard from other lands, including far off Korea and the land down under Australia, as well as Britain, France, Scandinavia, and other countries of Europe. These reports were interpreted into German, Italian, Japanese, and other languages represented by the foreign delegations that were present. For the entire audience, this was truly another highlight of the convention. They were most attentive, and many took notes. The triumph of divine teaching in the lives of many people was evidenced on Saturday morning when a large group of baptismal candidates assembled on one side of the track to hear the discourse that reviewed scriptural points dealing with the important step they were about to take. They were ready to answer the speaker's two questions regarding their solemn dedication and their recognition of what is involved in being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In unison, they responded with a loud da, or yes. Then, as the candidates were led by attendants along the track to the dressing rooms, the audience, greatly moved by the proceedings, broke out in sustained applause. The truth appeals to all age groups who were taught by Jehovah. So young and old were among the 1,489 who took this important step of baptism. Even those who were disabled did not hold back. Representatives of local and international news media were present to cover the event. This feature of the convention received wide publicity in other lands. Saturday afternoon, Brother Barry first showed an English copy of the new book, Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom, and then he announced the release of the Theocratic Ministry School guidebook in the Russian language. After receiving a copy, brothers eagerly examined the contents of the book and looked forward to improving their ability to spread divine teaching by applying the instructive material. On Sunday morning, the fine program included a symposium on Jeremiah's message of warning. A longtime member of the headquarters staff, who is also a member of the governing body, Brother Carl Klein, participated. In the afternoon, Brother Mihail Dasevich, who has served for many years in territory of the former USSR, gave the public talk. The audience paid rapt attention. Then came the concluding talk. A spontaneous and thunderous response came from the audience when Brother Henschel said, And while we thank the uh, different officials and other persons at the stadium, I think that what we want to do is especially thank Jehovah God that we could have this wonderful meeting together. И в то время как мы, конечно, благодарили всем разным людям, которые помогали нам провести конгресс, то я думаю, что все-таки более всего мы хотим поблагодарить Иегову за это. The prolonged applause indicated that all present were truly grateful to Jehovah for divine teaching. This was reflected in the faces of many young Russian brothers. It was an ovation for Jehovah. The audience then joined in singing song number 85, Jehovah is our refuge, followed by the closing prayer. It was evident that all in attendance were overjoyed by what they had experienced. Hearts had been deeply moved by divine teaching. Since this was the first time that Jehovah's people could come together in large numbers at a stadium in Moscow, they were so thankful for the privilege of being a part of such an outstanding convention. This event, attended by a peak of 23,743, left its mark. It gave greater impetus to the spreading of divine teaching in Russia, where so many are desirous of learning about the coming new heavens and new earth where righteousness is to dwell.
From August 5 to 8, Kiev, Ukraine, was the site of another international convention. This city of some 2,650,000 inhabitants, situated on the Dnieper River, was anticipating the event. At convention headquarters, preparation was made for the arrival of over 50,000 people from some parts of Russia and all of Ukraine. The majority came by special trains. At the main station in Kiev, volunteer workers welcomed the delegates, provided assistance, and helped them to get settled in their accommodations. Groups like these reflected their happiness and deep gratitude for this kind, brotherly attention. Foreign delegates arriving at the airport from many lands were also welcomed by local brothers. Special buses had been arranged to transport delegates to the main part of the city or to other areas where their hotels were located. Since there was insufficient hotel space for all the visitors, it was necessary to make additional arrangements for accommodations. Four of the six river boats docked near the main part of the city were used to provide meals and sleeping accommodations for 1,800 delegates from Germany and the United States. Jehovah's Witnesses are instructed to let their light shine at every opportunity. Hence, they made every effort to witness to the local people. Many had delightful experiences in sharing the truth with those who were conscious of their spiritual need. Lapel cards highlighting the convention theme and the wearer's country of origin attracted much attention. People were eager to find out where the visitors were from. Even when sightseeing, the brothers let their light shine by speaking with tour guides, bus drivers, and others. There was a lot of activity in preparation for what would take place at Republic Stadium, the site for the convention. Responsible brothers in the convention administration worked on hundreds of organizational details and supervised over 20 convention departments. For example, considerable work had to be done to get the convention facility suitably prepared. On the weekend prior to the convention, upwards of a thousand witnesses in the Kiev area showed up to clean the stadium. Many other volunteers were briefed about work assignments by responsible brothers in the information department. Others were busy erecting the stage and setting up a battery of sound equipment that would enable 16 different language groups to benefit from the program through interpreters. On the opening day of the convention, it was thrilling to watch the crowds arrive. They came by subway, trams, cars, and scores of buses. There was great excitement and expectation as the crowds of people entered the stadium area. How joyfully the throngs in this huge stadium responded when the opening words of welcome were expressed and simultaneously interpreted into many languages. On Thursday, Brother Henschel gave the keynote address. The audience listened attentively. Among Friday's highlights was the release by Brother Swingle of a new brochure in Russian and Ukrainian. Each of the delegates speaking one of these languages was delighted to receive a copy. Later that afternoon, the audience was delighted to hear the announcement concerning the release of My Book of Bible Stories in Russian. When the book was distributed, the local brothers were most appreciative of this gift. Especially was it a delight to the younger ones, as reflected in their beaming faces. Each day, speakers from different lands were on hand to give reports on the kingdom work in their respective countries. Reports presented in English were interpreted into Russian, Ukrainian, and other languages for the benefit of all the foreign delegations. It required much advanced planning to coordinate the participation of groups of brothers like this one that were involved in giving the reports from other lands as well as interpreting them. Before the morning session began on Saturday, Baptismal candidates had already filled all the seats in the lower tier that had been reserved for them. Additional areas had to be set aside until five sections in the lower level on the far side of the stadium were filled. The candidates who had completed a prescribed course of study of basic Bible teachings paid close attention to the baptismal talk. 
when the moment arrived for them to make a public declaration of their faith, all the candidates stood up. How did they respond to the second of the speaker's two questions? Truly, it was a resounding da, or yes. Following the prayer and a song, the vast audience was moved at seeing such results of divine teaching. They watched the newly dedicated disciples exit toward the dressing rooms. These were located in huge tents that had been erected near the entryway of the tunnel leading to six portable pools. These had been set up on the track so that the baptism would be visible to all in the stadium seating area. Soon, appropriately attired groups of brothers who had been assigned to do the baptizing took their places on the track near each pool in preparation for the actual immersion. Before long, a steady stream of candidates moved in orderly fashion to get immersed in public symbol of their dedication to Jehovah. They were meeting a requirement set out by Jesus Christ when he gave the commission recorded at Matthew 28, 19, and 20 to make disciples, baptizing them. Because of the large number of candidates, the immersion service progressed steadily for two hours and 15 minutes. Among those who were immersed were some who were elderly or disabled, as well as many young ones. But each one fully understood the meaning of what was being done and joyfully submitted to water baptism. That five sections of reserve stadium seating were needed for these candidates demonstrated most impressively that the truth of God's word has power to transform lives as it had in the case of these new disciples. On Saturday afternoon, the program concluded on a high note. The audience was thrilled when Brother Henschel announced the release of the Theocratic Ministry School guidebook in Russian. As in Moscow, the audience knew that this book would enhance the training provided through the Theocratic Ministry School in each congregation and make each minister more effective in spreading divine teaching. All through the convention period, the weather was very favorable. Sunday was no exception. It was clear and comfortable. All enjoyed the experiences from other lands, the explicit, pointed talks on Jeremiah, and the public talk delivered by a member of the Ukraine Country Committee. There was much to relate in the final talk. As Brother Jarris led up to announcing the number baptized, the audience was eagerly expectant, especially when the speaker said, and we know that you're interested in the number that were baptized. Конечно, мы тоже интересуемся числом тех, кто крестился. There were 7,402 that we welcome into Jehovah's organization. Их было 7,402, которых мы приветствуем как члены организации Иеговы. When they heard that 7,402 were baptized, the highest number for any convention yet held, their joy was unbounded. The record baptism figure underscores further Isaiah's words that Jehovah would make the little one a thousand and speed up the increase in its time. Divine teaching had indeed proved triumphant in this part of the world. After a closing song and prayer, the audience again gave expression to their gratitude to Jehovah for all his goodness and rich blessings that caused them to feel so joyful as his favored people. After feeding together at Jehovah's table, all agreed it was a spiritual banquet beyond compare in this part of the field. When bidding farewell, brothers of different nationalities and races joyfully reflected their oneness of faith their uniting bond of peace 
and their love for one another. Genuine expressions of brotherly affection could be observed everywhere, giving evidence of the triumph of divine teaching. It was, as one elder in Kiev put it, this is something we will never forget. Even if we die, it will come to mind when we are resurrected. To have a peak attendance of 64,714 in this huge stadium for the Divine Teaching International Convention, with witnesses present from more than 30 different lands, made it a historic occasion. Truly, it was a milestone in the forward movement of Jehovah's Grand Organization and a triumph for divine teaching. The international conventions in Moscow and Kiev, followed by those in Hong Kong, Manila, Santiago, Bogota, Nairobi, and the four South African cities of Cape Town, Durban, Pretoria, and Johannesburg, give all of us cause to rejoice greatly, unitedly, May we keep on praising our God for the triumph of divine teaching and for the millions who are now spreading that teaching worldwide. In the words of the inspired psalmist, we unitedly pray, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. And we wholeheartedly shout in triumph to Jehovah and serve him with rejoicing. Thank you.